As we discussed in previous videos, you're a big fan of the Fallout series, right? A pretty good size fan, yeah. After all, I've played all the games a fair chunk, and I know the ins and outs of most of uh, of what to do, and I'm without too much hassle. So you have no issue talking about Fallout 3 today, then? Nah. Uh, it's been a while since I played it, but I do remember it pretty well. Welcome, heroes and villains, to Fajuk Enterprise's YouTube channel. Take a moment, relax, stop your bickering, and just enjoy the show. So was the switch from how the view was in Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 to how it was in Fallout 3 jarring to you at all? Well, yes and no, since the first of the Fallout games I ever played was actually 3, and then I went to 1 and 2. So that's where it was a little bit different. <laughs> since the first one was the full... You had the first-person 3D view of the world as a first-person shooter-style game that could also be done as a third-person shooter to this, uh, well, basically tabletop-style bit of looking down upon your character from a slight angle up above in the sky. And uh, it was it took a little getting used to, but... I've uh, experienced other games uh, like that, so it didn't take me too long. So, it wasn't quite as jarring as what it might have been for other people. But, uh, it was interesting because while 3 lets you have access to the VATs for shooting specific spots and all that, it didn't quite have quite the same as what 1 and 2 did with being able to go ahead and go specifically for like the eyes and other areas. So if you're familiar with Fallout 3, what, who are the factions and how does karma affect them? Oh, you've got, uh, let's see... There's the people of Megaton, who, so long as you have a good faction, or at least a neutral faction for the most part, will interact with you and greet you and talk with you pretty well. Uh, there is one person there that you can get as a companion, but you need a negative karma for that. You don't need it too high, luckily. So you can still interact with the people in the town without too much hassle. Uh... It's usually the place where most of the good karma, neutral karma players will hang out for their home base, since it's one of three home base, well, play base locations. The other one, but it's more for the negative karma players, because the way to get that particular player home is actually to set off the nuke and make a ton and blow it sky high. <laughs> So that's uh, one little effect on the karma system. At any rate, um, you have the Brotherhood of Steel. You've got the Enclave. Uh, you've got the Children over in Little Lamplight. You've got the Slavers. You've got the Raiders. You've got the Super Mutants. Uh, you've got a couple of various towns that are around that interact with you a little differently depending on how your karma is and all that you've got uh, like for an example over at rivet city which is one of the which is basically a town made out of an old aircraft carrier in the southeast section of the map near washington there or the southern end of washington and uh, it's got in it uh, a bit of a faction side to it as well you can get a neutral uh, companion there but its main part is uh well you find out that uh the head guard there is a synth and uh, you can either help out the people that have come from the commonwealth to reclaim him or help the synth out uh with lying to the guys from the Commonwealth and persuading them to leave sort of thing. So, a bit of a 
choice there. Uh, since the simps are basically synthetic um, humans. They're more or less androids that uh, live in, well, basically, how to put it? You know data, uh, data from Star, uh, Star Trek Next Generation? Yes. Similar to him, except with a lot more emotion. Sort of a thing. But uh, there's a faction known as the Talons, and um, I don't remember the other faction. Oh, well. Uh, but depending on your karma, can affect some of these factions a little bit. Like, if you have a negative karma, you get treated better by the slavers, and you're able to enslave the kids from Little Lamplight, for a good example, which can mess with things a little bit there. Or at least a kid from Little Lamplight. Um, while having a good reputation those slavers will turn hostile towards you and you can kill them and free the slaves that they have. There. It's uh, a sort of give and take scenario because if you have too good of a reputation, then you get this mercen the Talons uh, mercenary company after you're trying to kill you. While if you have a negative reputation, if I remember right, it's the regulators? I think the... They might have been called. I'm trying to remember. But they come and try and... They're basically bounty hunters, and they try and stop you from committing more evil deeds throughout the wasteland. But for the most part, uh, most of the factions will interact with you whether you have a good or bad reputation through the karma system. I did some research to figure out what questions to ask you, and it seems like a lot of... Uh big portion of the plot is finishing your father James's work. Is he trying to, is he a good guy trying to do the right thing? Yeah, your father's a scientist that prior to you, you being born was on this big project to purify the contaminated water so it was uh, properly drinkable again instead of being radioactive. This project was put on hold when his wife, who was another scientist on the project, was pregnant with you and was about to give birth, sort of thing. After she gives birth to you, she dies, and in his grief, he goes to Vault 101, where he convinces them to let him in, and he becomes a doctor there for like the next 16 years while you grow up. From being an infant to your young uh, teenage state sort of thing. <laughs> Prior to him uh, leaving the vault, causing an uproar to try and finish his work on Project Purity. Where you go out and try and find him and find out about the project. Mostly from a comrade of his known as Madison Lee. Uh, Scientists that you can find trying to replicate the project's uh, results in miniature form on that aircraft carrier, River City. The main thing I've heard about Fallout 3 from various people is that the original ending doesn't make sense because you can have Fox as a follower. Do you agree with the original ending? Well... Like any of the Fallout games, pretty much up to 4, where the karma system and that, and your choices would affect the ending a fair bit. Um, you can usually, you can choose to be either the selfless, well, be nice and selfless like your father, if you're a good person, to go into the thing and fiddle with the controls, or you could send someone in who the radiation won't affect as much, which is uh, the Mr. Gusty companion that you can get from being neutral. Was he the good one? No, he was the neutral. There's Charon that you could get the ghoul. Uh, and then there's Fox, the super mutant that's friendly to you if you're good. 
Well, got a positive karma system. I heard in the base game you can, you have to go in. They don't you don't have a choice. Is that true? Not that I remember. Since prior to Project uh, the Broken Steel DLC, I'm sure you could choose your other companions to go in, but that was a long time ago now. I'm sure someone will com I'm sure if someone knows and watches this they'll comment in the they'll comment down below. Oh easily. After all it was a fair while ago since let's see, two thousand eight? Or was it two thousand yeah, two thousand and eight when the game came out. And it was like a year later when uh that uh, Broken Steel DLC came out for it. I believe in our previous discussion, we were just talking about Fallout in general. You mentioned how you really enjoy the DLC for Fallout 3 where you go to the mothership. Oh yeah, the Zeta. I remember that well. <laughs> Does that mean that aliens are canon to the Fallout universe? They are in many ways. Since, um... They're mostly a random encounter throughout the games. Uh, like if one and two, you, there is a bit of an, a random encounter on there with it, where uh, you go ahead and, and number two, for an example, you f and can encounter two technologies based on alien tech, the Biomed Gel and Skynet. Uh, with uh, one, there's a flying sorcerer with two alien skeletons that you can find randomly out in the desert. Well, within the wasteland sort of deal. Three, on the other hand, three went a little bit more in depth with it with the mothership Zeta DLC, where you get beamed up onto this mothership and fight your way through it and take control of it. And it becomes a third player base. Easily enough. Uh, but you gotta decide... Well, basically you have this nice epic showdown, if I remember, against another alien spacecraft that's above the planet. That crashes somewhere around Mexico. If I remember right. It doesn't sound like the comma really affects the, the Zeta DLC. Does it affect the other ones? Um... Not as much, since the karma system, does, while it does have some effects, doesn't affect the end game outcome for those DLCs uh, too much. Or like with uh, the pit, because when you go do that DLC, you go into this train tunnel, you're captured by some slavers, and you go work your way up. Uh, to either free the slaves with uh, the cure or help the raiders that are the ones in charge of the pit and make sure they retain the cure, which is this baby that's apparently got some antibodies in her blood to negate the radiation disease that uh, affects everyone in the pit, turning them into thralls. Which is a weird form of the ghouls, from what I can tell. The cow only really affects you with uh, the Broken Steel DLC, which is the end of uh, how the Fallout 3 was supposed to proceed. It was, from what I understand, it was cut content that was later brought in as proper content. Uh, but I'm not too sure on that front. But the choice there is when you go ahead and get access to the mobile bloody satellite array or whatever it is the with the bloody rockets to basically do a missile strike onto one or two locations. You can either choose to blow up uh, the Brotherhood's headquarters known as the Citadel, which is the Pentagon, or you can blow up the mobile uh, ray's targeting area where you're currently at. Either way, uh, it, it gets affected by your karma. Because if you choose to blow up the Citadel, you get the Brotherhood turn against you as a well, constant hostile force. 
understandably, and you lose, you get negative 1,000 karma, which will put you in the whole uh, bad karma situation. But if you decide to take out the Enclave's mobile uh, base, um, I can't remember it offhand. It was like um, Adam's Airfield or something. In any case, you can target that, blow it sky high, get plus a hundred car, uh, sorry, plus a thousand karma, and get a big cheer from the Brotherhood from it all. Of course, if you decide to take out the Citadel, you get a f unique hand, uh, well, forty-five Magnum hand cannon sort of thing out of it without too much hassle. So, you mentioned you're able to drop a nuke and orbital missiles. How badly can you mess up the world that Fallout 3 takes place in? Well, on destruction of the actual landscape, not as much. Because you are only limited to like four locations in the game in total in that regard. But messing up uh, towns and that massively like there's one called um, uh, big something any case it's where the kids from Little Lamplight once they turn 16 get uh, exiled to because Little Lamplight is only for kids it's this whole um, Peter Pan and the Lost Boys scenario sort of thing where no grown-ups allowed. And once you hit a set age, you're considered a grown-up and you get exiled over to where the adults go to live. But you could help them out, or you can literally wipe out the town where nobody lives there anymore. There's a few scenarios like that where you can basically make a t the area just a ghost town where nothing's no longer there. Which I've done a few times when I was evil. <laughs> just for the shits and giggles side of things, where I've just wiped out a town and just gone, yep, I'm good. Usually I turn most of the citizens into slaves. Play Fall 3 as much as you claim to. You must have a few stories that you could share with us at this time. Oh. Uh, uh. Having access to the Abraham Lincoln stuff was always fun. The Lincoln re uh, repeater was always one of the best weapons I found in the game. It used the 44 ammo. It was a lever action rifle, very powerful, very useful. And it was from this whole uh, side quest where you either helped or uh, ruined a bunch of freed slaves that are trying to get themselves a new base of operations, which happens to be the Lincoln Memorial, which is currently under control of a bunch of uh, slavers. So you can do the good route and help out the slaves, or you can turn around back stab them and all the rest, but... While you're doing that, you're picking up a couple of items that you can go ahead and hand over to this museum curator that's in Rivet City, who's after all sorts of various bits. Hell, you even stole the Bill of Rights out of the History Museum <laughs> to give to him. Uh, he's a bit of a kooky character, and he's interesting. There's another character in Rivet City that's a, me a drug addict that you can help get off the drugs or make him go OD. Oh, the Oasis. It is the most interesting storyline because you meet up with a character from the previous Fallouts uh, there who is this ghoul that has this goddamn tr little. Um, sprout that grows out of his head when you first meet him. Uh, uh, what, what, which one was it? Was it one or was it two? I don't 
it was one if I remember right. But he was a guy that fell into the FEV virus stuff. Uh, well, FEV tanks. Uh, but unlike the master, he became a ghoul and he had this plant growing out of his head. Well, on three, you find him. The plant hasn't isn't just this little sprout anymore. It's a full blown tree, and what's left of him is this head, basically his face sticking out of the tree. <laughs> And uh, the tree is basically regrowing the plant life within the wasteland. Because throughout all of Fallout 3, every tree is dead. Nothing but a burnt husk. Sort of thing. So there's no vegetation whatsoever around. It's just rocks, dirt, and dust. With a bunch of busted up trees scattered around. And as such, you come to the Oasis, which has nothing but lush green trees everywhere around it. You find out that the spores that sprout from out of this particular guy tree, well, plant that was growing out of the guy's head, is causing all these trees to sp spring forth. You can either help out... Uh, well, there's two particular characters there. There's the, since it's got this religious cult there, with this mother, mother, oh, what was her name? Oplika or something? And then you got father something or other, which I totally have forgotten his name. Either way, they send you down uh, over to the guy. He talks to you. You drink some weird cocktail that they made out of his sap and other stuff and you go on this bit of a weird trip for a moment before you've been basically blessed and are now a child of the oasis and you help out these help out that little faction there which i forgot about but you got three choices you can either side with the guy that's basically the face in the tree since he wants to die he doesn't want to keep on existing. Choice two, which is, I think, from the father, is to accelerate the plant growth by adding a special solution to the dude's heart, which you find <laughs> from going into this tunnel system. It's amongst the roots of the tree. It's just, you see the guy's heart just being away. The third option from the mother is to add another different type of solution to the heart, which will slow down the sprouting of the spores to prolong the guy's uh, life and cause less pain. So you get three choices there. Of course, if you kill him, all these damn cultist guys go hostile on you. But it's good to keep uh, access to them. For the most part. <sighs> it's a nice little vending area. So, anyone or any... Is there anyone or anything you would like to shout out at this time? Oh. Uh, of course, there's you, man. After all, I've been enjoying your stuff a fair bit. Definitely been enjoying the interviews, watching them. Even off your second channel there. Uh, with the bits and pieces that you've done there. I definitely enjoyed how you're talking about your character from D&D &D there, to your little wizard <laughs> with the scrolls of fireball on that. Uh, why do I say wizard when he's a shadow dancer? Uh, I don't know. It's that time of night, I guess. <laughs> but uh, apart from that, uh, uh, just my mates on Steam. Friends uh, from the D and D groups and the usual sort of thing. I don't know why I didn't start with this, but my guest has been the Curse Powered and Otacans. Oh, you closer, Atanicus. Atanicus. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to do a bit of a. Romanish 
mix on it uh, sort of thing for, 